back here. This two snow oaks. We set Dan <laughs> Jessup and Evan Whitehouse here. We saw last round younger brother Andrew moving on to the semis. It is that you know you have to imagine when you grow up playing Magic, the idea of meeting your brother in the finals of a big tournament like this, something you always talk about, and it's possible. They're on opposite sides of the bracket. Andrew's taking care of business in the quarterfinals. Dan's hoping to do the same here. I'm always envious of these brother pairs who are both very good at magic. Brad Nelson and Corey Baumeister, of course, when I was coming in, when I was first getting into the game, the Ruel brothers were very heavily publicized. My younger brother never really got beyond playing Commander, but uh, <laughs> we, we had some fun games anyway. But this is a really cool situation. Dan, the older brother here of the two. 30th right now. He's, both players actually have cracked into the top 32 on our leaderboard. Now for Evan Whitehouse, he's had quite the last month as well. His team getting second place along with teammate Zach Keeney. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, that, that team versus the Jessups has been our morning <laughs> coverage. Uh, Evan hoping to succeed where Keeney didn't. Keeney actually, sorry, Keeney took Gerard to five there. Did not move on to the semifinals. Right. And that is the other side of the bracket anyway. Right. Yeah, and Evan Whitehouse... A little quietly, uh, number twenty-three on the leaderboard. Yeah, yeah, that. You know, that We're gonna place see finish. him next year. Yeah, that number is gonna move up after this tournament. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lock up some buys and maybe make a push for the players' championship that we're bringing back next year. I am so excited to be able to announce that. Yes. Yeah, I've only done one so far. You've you've been on all three. They are. It is the best tournament of the year. Yes, by yeah. by a lot. It's a ton of fun. White House and me on the play here with Dredge for our first game. Both these first two games, pre-board mentioned, these are the games where we expect White House to be favored. On the play, a turn two cathartic reunion. Tell me, tell me how this shapes up. If he can land one, it feels like it'll be very hard for Jessup to recover. Yeah, as long as you have a dredger, the way that card is templated, discard two cards first, then draw three cards. Right. Get a dredger in the graveyard, even if the reunion puts it there, you get to dredge up to three unique times if it's Stinkweed Imp. That's looking at 15 cards. That's absurd for right. two mana. Most draw spells, you know, this the rummaging r effect in red is considerably worse mm -hmm. than, than looting. But dredge is a specific archetype where this is actually upside. Yeah, it really takes advantage of it. Jessup has a little bit more play against specifically Cathartic Reunion because he can get online with the turn one Mausoleum Wanderer. So you can counter the effect. That can buy Jessup quite a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, if he has the Mausoleum Wanderer, Evan May, you know, doesn't want to go for Cathartic Reunion into that. No. So we're going to look at opening sevens. Dredge, you mentioned a deck that mulligans a lot. However, mulliganing is something they can recover from pretty easily, and Evan will go to six. Mm -hmm. Not surprising to start with the mulligan. It is always really nerve-wracking when your Dredge opponent keeps on seven. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that just means that their, their hand is stocked. They already have looting. They already have a Dredger, stuff like that. So many decks, say like Valakut, a deck I like to play, keeps their seven-card hands because the odds that they improve on six are just pretty low. Six-card hands are just, you know, Valakut especially, six-card hands are worse than sevens. But with Dredge there are so many excellent sixes that when they're keeping on seven, it must, the only reason they keep on seven is because they have an excellent seven. Mm -hmm. You are seeing a little bit more coming into play with face-up deckless here. Dredge is such a unique deck. You see Dan Jessup mulliganing here. He might have had a hand that's perfectly keepable in the dark. Right. Dredge is so different that there's so many hands that are just abstractly generally pretty good that you just send back because dredge is so strange he's going to be looking to make sure that he has a lot of pressure online something like a hand that starts on two and then curves into spell queller is kind of the hallmark of how the spirit deck plays in a lot of matchups but it's not going to play here yeah and you expect that when you kind of saw Dan pause during his mulligan, it's the kind of thing where he looks at his hand, it's probably creatures and lands and spells, and think, hey, this is a keep. And then you start thinking about it again and said, is it actually a keep? Right. And the deck mulligans a ton in the cyborg games looking for rest and peace. But in this particular matchup, knowing about it, he does have that main deck copy of Remorseful Cleric, which is a reasonable piece of graveyard hate. It's tough to mulligan to because it is just a one-shot. It's more of a Tormod's Crypt. It's not nearly as good as Rest in Peace, but there is incentive to mulligan any average-looking seven-card hand if it doesn't have the Remorseful Cleric. Well, 
get players looking at their sixes pretty quick here and find out uh, exactly how many cards that we land on to start. And White House is going to five. This is getting to the threshold where he's looking for a very specific mix of things. There's still excellent five card hands. Um, a hand just with, say, two lands, Faithless Looting, Cathartic Reunion, Life from the Loam. That's a busted five card hand. But uh, he does need to find fairly specific things. Believe that Jessup is in on six here, though. Jessup has kept you having. Presents a five. Now, see what he can do on four. And, you know, we talked about the importance of Jessup splitting the pre-board games 1-1. One, one. You never cheer for your opponent to mulligan to four, but it's certainly... This is a way that he can get one of these. You never cheer for your opponent to mulligan. I want to beat their sevens. You know? <laughs> I like. I'm playing the. I'm playing the emotional game here. There's there's no honor in playing dredge. You don't gotta uphold yeah. your code against the enemy. I, I want you to keep your very best seven, <laughs> and then I want to beat it. Because <laughs> then then there's that hopelessness that sinks in, and you think, well, what am I gonna do the next game? Well, if my opponent only keeps four cards hands, and I win the match, there's a very high likelihood that. I I have a f time for a lunch break, which is what I'm all about. <laughs> I am about lunch breaks. Yeah, you just got to check in with yourself. <laughs> you know, what, what, keep up with your needs. A lot of Magic yeah. players do not have very good tournament day diets. When I play blue, the blue-white do-nothing control, that's the biggest challenge. Is how are you going <laughs> to get that, mat, that right. lunch match? What's up? the most efficient way for me to stay nourished? So turn one, Faithless Looting from Evan Whitehouse. And he actually picked up a Stinkweed Imp to discard here. Yeah, so, and a Bloodgast. So and this is a power of Dredge. You know, you say he mulled to four. That's true, but but there's a game to be played. When you draw five a turn, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really matter to start on four. Yeah. Jessup's first turn just a tapped Ooh. Breeding Pool. Here is a sign of weakness, though. There's a no natural second draw. land, that natural draw. Shriekhorn from White House. Yeah, that is the weakness. And if he draws one more land, that may be all he needs. Now the question is how many chances he gets to do it. Supreme Phantom from Jessup. It's not Remorseful Cleric. Sometimes you see a deck more salvage in these dredge lists. That would be a little yeah. incentive to start dredging earlier, though that is not available for White House. White House Shriekhorns himself. Another looting and Copperline Gorge into the yard. You really wanted that gorge. Draws, it looks like another prized amalgam. So, still a miss for Evan, but he'll go for that second Shriekhorn. Ryan, if he never hits a second land, but just keeps Shriekhorning himself, can he hit enough stuff in the graveyard to have this be okay? Um, so you can end up with Narcomoeba's prized amalgams and creeping chills without hitting land drops. That okay. is some pretty powerful stuff. That's going to depend a lot more on what Jessup's draw is doing. He already has Supreme Phantom, and with that online, getting another Lord makes it really easy to block prized amalgams indefinitely, if he's even on blocking duty. Right, third land from Jessup and a pass. His White House goes back to milling. Yeah, that second land is so key, though, right? Because it, it, it triggers blood ghasts. Now we can flash black back conflagrates. Mm -hmm. And three of the four cards White House has flipped over to Shriekhorn have been draw steps he would have preferred to the cards he's drawn. Two lands and a Faithless Looting. Yeah. Did mill over a Creeping Chill. Now he has plenty of dredgers in the yard, but he's still trying for that land. He's actually paused on upkeep. Is he trying for the land anymore? Now he has, makes the decision, and yes, he does. It's Stinkweed Imp. Another miss for White House. The yep. chill's giving him some time, though. Back up to 19, Jessup down to 17. It buys a little bit of a time, though. The spirit deck tends to snowball in its damage right. output. You get some lords online. You start cloning your lords with a phantasmal image, and you attack for a lot more turn after turn. Creeping Chill plays a lot more against a static amount of damage accrued every turn. end step getting a hollowed fountain here for Jessup dead have phantasmal image and it looks like rattle chains is the end step play some extra damage in and it will also allow him to leave up really all his mana for the rest of the game right 
doesn't come into play in this matchup in a big way. Though it, it is one of the strengths of the deck in the format at large. Yeah, four, attack, four damage swings in. Evan might try for a block here. See Shriekhorn mills over. That's two lands. <laughs> Ugh, you hate to see that. And land prize to Malcolm. Yeah, a combination of multiple Narc Amoebas could have traded with the Rattle Chains. Right. Back to Evan we go. Remember, you, the idea, these lands, it, it hurts to see your new mill over them. You know, as far as probabilities go, there's no penalty in trying. You know, it's not like, oh, I shouldn't mill in case I mill my lands. That's right. not really how this that works. It's the kind of thing that our small human brains will make us feel like we made the wrong decision, but mathematically it's all the same. But yeah, uh, the right. way it's shaken out here, White House just not playing magic. You see him picking up a Narc Amoeba naturally. He was trying to flip that over with the Shriekhorn, but even if that was slightly different, one Narc Amoeba, it's not playing here. The Supreme Phantom is already naturally larger than it, and it grows all the other creatures in Jessup's deck by a factor of one Narc Amoeba. Collected company end step from Dan Jessup. And this might be the closing of the window. Evan had some turns to hit that second land. I, he may have run out of turns. Yeah. I think it needed to happen fairly quickly. Yeah, and you see Supreme Phantom and a lot of other options. Dan's got I believe five or just straight six creatures here. Sadly, can only pick two. Yeah. Let's see what he wants to go for. I like that he's options. got Selfless Spirit up front that would insulate him against a nightmare scenario where White House gets a conflagrate online in a small number of turns. Yeah, if he draws the land immediately, conflagrates the whole board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very low chance that White House is able to take over this game, but Jessup wisely seeing the possibility, ways that he could potentially lose this game. An additional Supreme Phantom, the other pick, so now the creatures are just naturally large. Should be able to close this in two. Yeah, back to Jessup we go. He's going to sacrifice Horizon Canopy to draw a card. Draws into Geist of St. Traft. Phantasmal Image. It looks like it's going to make a third Supreme Phantom. And let's count up some damage. But Selfless Spirit is five. Rattle Chains is five. The Phantoms are both threes. This is for 16. This is lethal if he doesn't hit a creeping chill, and he does not. So, Dan Jessup takes game one. A big win for him on the draw pre-board, 1-0. Yeah, White, Na White House needed a Narc Amoeba or a creeping chill to tread water, or as we established earlier in the weekend, uh, more slowly drown. <laughs> he was in a lot yeah, of trouble nope. there. For game two, deck lists will not change. Evan can still consult the deck list, which is what he's going to do, but players are not allowed to sideboard yet. With Jessup winning that one, Ryan, is he now the favorite for this match? That's a huge swing in his favor. We, um, but we weren't talking about winning a pre-board game as being a home run for Jessup. It was a necessity right. to be competitive, kind of the way it seems to look. If he gets a bunch of games where White House Mulligan's yeah. the four... Misses a second land drop. Certainly, he's a favorite. Yeah, I mean, if he gets a second pre-board game here, this is. I would. This, yeah, I, I mean, would call him a favorite <laughs> from there. Yeah, yeah, that that's already an upset. Yeah. So if Evan equal, equalizes, then it'll be the best of three with sideboards. Jessup will have stolen the play from him, though. He'll get the playing game. Would get two games on the play. That makes rest in peace a lot more effective. Right. You know, the weakness of the card just being that sometimes turn two is too slow. You're just faster more often when you're the first person to get to two. I always get to be ahead of Cathartic Reunion that way at the very least. So it's only then for the second game. So Evan Whitehouse's deck not able to do too much here where he's hoping to get things online. I actually, for his four-card hands are considered, that's a pretty good one he had. He had a Faithless Looting plus a land. Yeah, uh, you're definitely not going to go lower than four in that hand and needed to get a little bit lucky even from there. There was a lot going on. 
you know, faithless looting, got the stinkweed imp into the graveyard early. Just really no opportunities to dredge, which was uh, disappointing on his side of things, but relatively likely anyway. New to our channel here at SCG Live has been the Versus Live series. This is playtesting from some of the top players on the SCG Tour. Now on this channel every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And it's, it's been pretty great. I know you were part of it this weekend. Yeah, I battled against Ross Merriam. No spoilers. We played a three-match set of Modern. He was running his Is It Drake's deck uh, against the Gauntlet, the Vuturnian Weekly Tuesday and Thursday. You can also catch Brad Nelson and uh, Todd Anderson fellow commentator this weekend. Yeah, Drake's a break breakout strategies just in general. We saw la you know our most recent open a mono red and is it Drake's closing out the finals. One copy of each made the top eight of the invitational as well. Our one seed Marshall Arthurs on mono red did not advance. He lost to Andrew Jessup. Uh, but we do have Justin Gebbing with Is it Drake's as well. Mm -hmm. The deck, I think Arclight Phoenix is just a card that a lot of players missed. There's things about it that don't scream eternal playable or even standard playable, but when you're making a three power creature with haste for zero mana, if the hoops you have to jump through, the format allows you to do, which in standard, Opt is a big player and how that works, and in modern, you get a ton more cantrips, Faithless Looting, the primary one. The card's really powerful. All right, well, Ryan, here's the situation you talked about. Your dredge opponent's on the play, and they keep on seven. Yikes. Yeah, Jessup takes a mulligan here. What is he looking for? He already knows his opponent's got a good seven. So uh, the most he can reasonably ask for, you want your fastest possible spirits hand. Uh, we mentioned that Mausoleum Wanderer plays well against Cathartic Reunion. That's a good box to check. The best possible would be a hand that has both Wanderer on one and that Remorseful Cleric on turn two. Yeah, that would be pretty nice. Outside it's of that, just be aggressive. Sure. So when you lose ask to be aggressive, are you looking... There's a couple ways his deck can be aggressive. It, I mean... We he can power out turn three collected companies, mm -hmm. or he can be aggressive with reflector mages, or with that one of Geist of Saint Traft. Are some of these better than others? Yeah, I think that that one of so Geist of Saint Traft on the draw naturally off of lands not very good, but a hand with noble hierarch Geist of Saint Traft, I, I like would that. love that on the play, and it can work on the draw. Yeah, I, there's some things to like about it. It can't be cleaned up by conflagrate. Uh, Evan's not. So the danger of Geist of Saint Traft is that when all they need is a two two, and then right. But his deck actually does not have too many things that can block it. Yeah, and once you get another Lord online, Supreme Phantom, then the it gets a little bit more difficult to block. Also, Reflector Mage can clean up the battlefield a little bit out of Jessup's deck. Yeah, some of the dredge cards, when you put them in their hand, it's the last place they want to be. Right. Six-card hand for Jessup. Unlike Evan, he doesn't have the luxury of mulliganing to four. Uh, he's going to go to five. His, his fours are significantly less playable. Yes, that is absolutely true. White House is not able to take advantage of dredging in that first game, but it was a situation where if he had a second land, dredging Stinkweed Imp every turn is pretty dang close to drawing five. It's a very limited range of things your deck can do, but dredge is a big player in the modern format. There's definitely enough graveyard stuff to justify it. And on five, that noble hierarch Geist of St. Traft start you mentioned, you know, I'd be pretty happy to find that if I was Dan. It, because that's a hand that can win here. Right. Yeah, still still would be fine with Mausoleum Wander into Remorseful Cleric, though you need the top of your deck to really cooperate on every turn of the game with that hand. It doesn't apply enough pressure. Whereas it's a little bit easier to convert with the Geist of St. Traft with a very small number of cards. Yeah, you find a slower start with Evan, something without a blocker, and you're hitting for six a turn. There's a there's a way. Right. Yeah, Morseful Cleric is really more of a speed bump sort of card. Tormod's Crypt is not terribly effective in the matchup. It buys you some time, but when you're in a low resource situation, you need to also find ways to apply pressure after you sweep the graveyard. Danny, keeping on five, scries to the bottom. Yeah, you don't want to see, like, Noble Hierarch, Geist, Collected Company, two lands. Something like that. Yeah, that could win. Yeah. Now we'll see just how good the 7 Evan kept was. Turn 1, a dread, a faithless looting puts both Stinkweed Imp and Prized Amalgam into the graveyard. 
Yeah, that's a very scary start. No play for Dan. He does actually have a reasonable start here. He has Supreme Phantom into a three drop into Collected Company. If that's... Now we have to see if that's good enough. I mean, that's reasonable in a number of matchups, but all of the hands that we were talking about that Jessup's looking for in these games and situations involve a one-mana thing. Right. Either Wanderer or Noble Hierarch. Missing that is going to cost him in this matchup. Dredge of five puts Creeping Chill in, into exile. Evan goes up to 23. Dan down to 17. Land puts Bloodgast into play. Prized Amalgam's going to join it. It's a lot of damage pretty fast here. Yes. And is there a cathartic reunion? No, it's just a life from the low. Bit of a pre for Dan. Yeah, not the scariest thing, though. It is another dredger. Sure. And Life from the Loam is the card that really powers big conflict rates out of the dredge deck. That adds a lot to the closing speed for the deck. Yeah, not a conflict rate in the yard just yet. Evan has two copies of Faithless Looting to join that Life from the Loam. Never takes too long for the dredge deck no. to find what it wants. <laughs> no, as you mentioned, you know, when Stink Weedimps are draw fives and Loams are draw threes... White House is only playing two conflagrates. You do regularly see three copies of the spell in the deck. Yeah, he's a little light on that game one interaction. Two conflagrates and one Dark Blast is it. Um, now, Dark Blast actually... That's a big win in this matchup. That's a big matchup. win in this matchup, so don't mind that. He's gone heavier on dredgers than we sometimes see. He's got two Golgari Thugs in addition to the Stinkweed Imps and Life from the Loams. I do like that Treecorn is a card that has become back in vogue and just having more dredge hits when you activate your Treecorn does improve your deck's consistency. Turn two, Supreme Phantom. For Dan Jessup on a five-card hand, he's going to play the cards on curve and hope it's good enough. A dredge three from Jessup finds two lands. That's not a hit, but that conflagrate in the graveyard is going to matter. It's a discard outlet for the dredgers he's already picked up. Answer to the Supreme Phantom... A lot to like about that card. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. And right now you see there's six cards in hand for Evan Whitehouse. You got Prized Amalgam, Narc Amoeba, Stinkweed Imp, Life from the Loam, a third land. And he has one other hiding in the back there. Prized Amalgam and Bloodgast Swing. And this Bloodgast attack is really nice. Yeah, it looks like a good block for Jessup. 1-3 versus 2-1, but it means that... You know, White House can just spend one less card on dealing with that Supreme Phantom. Well, what I also like is he has this prized amalgam in his hand, which he can't get into play, yeah, and he has no way to trigger it. So he discarded. actually he wanted Bloodgast to die here so that he could get the amalgam. It is a very heavy swing in White House's favor. Yeah, and Jessup takes the block, goes to 13, and now he can discard the second prized amalgam. He can get back the Bloodgast to the third land, and he'll get the other amalgam. It's setting up for a nice turn four. Yeah, with Jessup with the clear battlefield, having eight power on your side. Right. One to finish off the Phantom, three upstairs, sends Jessup to ten. Land drop here brings back Bloodgast, and prized Malcolm with it. It's eight damage as it stands. We'll see if White House can get two more. Any creeping chill, that second conflagrate, a Bloodgast. There's a lot of ways to make it happen. Drogs called Captain for Jessup. It's a blocker. Not what you want to do with your lords. No, here's the dredge five for Stinkweed Imp. And what do we find? Here's a creeping chill and a bloodgast. With Jessup under 10, I think that's lethal. Yeah, it's already life from the limb available, so that bloodgast is a factor. The chill is a factor. Yeah, yep. looks Je good for White House. Jessup down to seven. That means bloodgasts have haste. It's going to cast life from the loam, get back a land, put bloodgast into play. If Dan Jessup blocks the biggest creature, which is an amalgam, seven damage gets through. That's just math. Yeah. <laughs> As math, <laughs> Evan sees it too. So, Dan Jessup's going to pick up the cards. Dredge with the turn four there. And Evan Whitehouse evens things up at one game apiece. All right. So, you were asking if Jessup was a favor, favorite after picking up the one pre sideboard game. Right. I said it would take two. I'm, I would be surprised if we don't see a five game sideboard. Yeah. This is, this is such a. This is our closest matchup, and this is just. It's right where you'd want to be that this is anyone's game. Yes. So the big difference with the sideboard is Dan Jessup improves and improves in a big way. We were talking about him drawing relevant cards in this in games one and two, and you had five relevant cards. You had the four Wanderers and the one Remorseful Cleric. We're not just counting to five relevant cards here. We have a lot more now. 
Yeah, post sideboard. So just some stuff that he doesn't want. Those three stony silence, night item, whatever. But he has three rest in peace. That is such a massive upgrade yeah. in the matchup. Um, you, can, you can add the extra path to exile as well if you're able to manage the graveyard. Otherwise, with your clear egg or your rest in peace, and White House has just a small number of creatures on the battlefield, path to exile can be pretty good in the matchup. A lot of times when I've seen people do well against Dredge, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, has been very good against specifically Cathartic Reunion and Life from the Loam. Now, I can see that as a play-draw mm -hmm. situation. Yes, I definitely think it's too slow on the draw, but you're, you're absolutely right. On the play, that can be a pretty significant swing in Jessup's favor. And then there is an additional copy of Geist of Saint Traft in the sideboard. Uh, that was something that we were talking about pre-board. I think still think it's true, where Noble Hierarch, Geist of Saint, draw, Saint Traft draw, certainly on the play, can be a good hand for Jessup in the matchup. All right, so he brings in Stony Silence. He brings in Thalia. He said Path of is pretty fine. Um, any counter spells you like? Negate, Disdainful Stroke, Unified Will. I like one mana counter spells in the matchup. They're reasonable answers to Cathartic Reunion, kind of yeah. always. You don't have to leave up too much mana to do it. You do kind of want an answer to Conflagrate. It's like, okay, yeah, so I kind of want to counter these. I wish they were spell like pierces. But yeah, yeah, I'd love to have a one mana thing. The one copy of Negate uh, and or the Unified Will can be fine. So how often does Unified Will work against Dredge? It's an interesting question. Right? <laughs> it's like, how many creatures are they going to have in play? That, that card is very awkward. Yeah. In, you know, if things are going well, zero, but sometimes it's a lot. Right. I mean, if it's already a lot, you're just kind of losing yeah. it. It does not a card that would be yeah. in your sideboard that's winning that game over Unified Will. Uh, so I don't think that really comes into play in the equation of how many counter spells do I want? Is it one or two? Okay. okay. Now, guys, this ain't trapped. We like that pre-board. It's... I assume the cards I'm looking at, I guess, to board out, it means probably better than some of these ones here. Yeah, and we are face up against Dark Blast in the Dredge deck, so I think that the Phantasmal Images and Conflagrate uh -huh. also a factor there. It can be pretty poor in the matchup. Spell Queller doesn't do a lot here. If you're on the play, it's quite a bit better. Sometimes you can catch a... Noble Hierarch into it can do things. Yeah, Cathartic Reunion, but it is generally pretty mopey. The um, Phantasmal Image plus Drog Skull Captain 1-2 Punch. Bant does that in a lot of matchups. You didn't really like Image, and Drog Skull Captain is slow. If, if Jan gets both of them together, it's good, but do you want to play for that, or do you want to just get rid of all of them? I would go the other direction. Start by cutting the images and then trim some number of the captains. Yeah. They're One still good. Yeah, once the images is gone, then the captain feels like it's next on the chopping block. Yeah. Yeah, Supreme Phantom, definitely the better lord in the matchup. Yeah. Yeah, just be, because it's two mana, there's a lot of pressure on just the clock. Right. Evan Whitehouse, he gets a sideboard as well. Four copies of Nature's Claim, two copies of Damping Sphere, two copies of Ancient Grudge, three Lightning Axe, an Assassin's Trophy, a Leyline of the Void, and then a third Conflagrate and a second Dark Blast. So those bottom two cards, the Conflagrate, the Dark Blast, they're pretty powerful here. It's a number of small creatures that you want to answer with your deck. Dark Blasting Noble Hierarch is really big win in White House's favor. Assassin's Trophy is quite good. It's a creature matchup, and you know about mm -hmm. Stony Silence. So you uh, probably guess that without deckless face up. Yeah, so I mean, he has six removal spells in his sideboard. Is it on? Is am I going too far to say board in all six? I'm less interested in lightning axe, and part of the reason is I am interested in some number of the nature's claim, because if, oh, okay. if rest in peace shows up, you want to take that off the table. That, that's more important than lightning axing something. That makes sense. Yeah, he is priced into boarding in some number of nature's claim because Jessup's not just playing some rest in peace; he's playing three. Mm -hmm. And Dredge is also a deck where you don't want to sideboard a ton of cards. Do you think Evan can win with a rest in peace in play? Or when one hits the table, is it remove it or lose? Depends how heavily Jessup mulligans. Depends if White House gets blue mana online. We see a funny thing yeah. happen where we have a Dredge player against a non-functional graveyard hate hand with prized amalgams in hand that they can't cast. They are pretty light on blue mana sources. But it, it's possible in some set of the games. Again, mulliganing, it looks like Jessup keeping on seven, White House on six. And there's even more pressure for White House to mulligan in the sideboard games. You know that rest in peace yeah. is there. You got to have somewhat of a plan for that. If you, if let's say you're in Evan's seat and Dan has kept on seven, and Evan has a, a good dredge hand, a very good goldfish hand that's completely cold to rest in peace. Are you in to do? Are you are you in? You keep those. Okay. 
if it's just excellent, if you have those best possible. My hand already has two Faithless Lootings, a yeah. Stinkweed in, because you yep. get enough stuff on the table before Rest in Peace comes down. If but you're on the draw. Yeah, on the, on the draw is certainly tougher. But uh, I, th I think that you're the, still in. the odds of having turn two Rest in Peace Remorseful Cleric versus you mulliganing into a hand that's good against that versus the mm -hmm. weight of how likely you are to win with your Busted Dredge Draw, I, I would keep the budget Busted Dredge Draw. All right, Evan has kept on six, scries to the top. And here we go for game three. Maybe not a recipe, but Dan this time gets to start on Noble Hierarch. And we had you had a lot of plays you liked that went accelerated out. Right. And that was a big check for Dark Blast. White House is going to miss on that one. But Geist of St. Traft here is excellent. That Thalia he just drew is excellent, too. Yeah, when your opponent has no turn one play, that means they're waiting for yeah. turn two. And it's all spells. It's all stuff that Thalia slows down. So so what do, you, do you have a preference here? We could turn two Geist, or we could go Thalia Mausoleum Wanderer. Do you want the damage, or do you want to control the draws? I, I think Thalia is a fair amount better. Just stopping your opponent from playing and then deploying the same clock next turn. Yeah. That's multiple time walks. Yeah, and Dan's going to do exactly that. Between Thalia and Wanderer, it's going to be hard for Evan to resolve anything like a cathartic reunion. Yeah, if you're asking me if I want to lava spike my opponent <laughs> versus cast time walk, I usually Ooh. would choose to cast time walk. Yeah. I like both those cards. <laughs> <laughs> I like at least one of those cards. <laughs> So back to Evan we go. He had just Arid Mesa turn one, and it's going to be hard for him to make some plays here. I guess ideally, he could, if he has a Dark Blast, things could line up, but no black mana. He will cast a two-mana Faithless Looting, and now Dan has to decide whether that resolves. I'm pretty interested in using the Wanderer, especially because he has a full hand, and part of it is Geist the Saint Traft. Yeah, and that's what he'll do. And actually, that doesn't even cost him damage, right? Thalia now gets to attack with Exalted. Exactly. Well, it's four versus three if you cast a spirit this turn. Fair enough. Here is Thalia swinging in for three, a fourth land. And Dan is going to make that guy to actually check that, a Drog Skull Captain. That's a bit worse. Does have a Collective Company in hand. Couldn't cast it this turn because of his own Thalia. Mm -hmm. Another land next turn puts that online. Natural draw here for Evan. That's never a good sign. Yeah, well, there's no choice. <laughs> he just hasn't been able to do anything yet. Can you imagine if Faithless Looting had Dredge? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <It's sick. laughs> but I just going to put it back in my hand and keep yeah. casting it? <laughs> I, that's something, you know, you <laughs> That would make the Arc Light Phoenix deck even better. You know, that's one of things with Life from... <laughs> what Life from the Loam has going for it, well, a lot of things, but something that's really broken... When you start putting dredge on spells, yes, I really think they they missed the boat. There's no, well, I guess with dark blast is it like in, more instants with dredge on them? <laughs> I think I think we really we really could have explored that design space. Yeah, the game would have benefited from that for sure. Like, how about what if opt had dredge? You know, something like that. Uh, even, even something like that, right? Yeah, it, it would be good. It'd be very good. <laughs> There's no way they print that card. <laughs> Thought scour with dredge. Is that a good this one? This is kind of the argument that <laughs> creatures with trample are better than creatures without <laughs> trample. Is <laughs> we're going down that road. <laughs> Treasure cruise with dredge. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I'll I'll refill the yard and put this treasure cruise back in my hand. <laughs> is, that, is that strong? It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Give it dredge seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that you hit the right number that's on gotta, that. That's got to be correct. <laughs> if that card had Delve 10 <laughs> and Dredge 3, it would still be busted. Yeah, was... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. <laughs> this is a nice card. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two blood gas into the graveyard for Evan Whitehouse, but he's he's under the gun with some damage. Both Thalia and Drogshaus Captain, they swung in and put him to 11. And now Jessup has left up some collected company mana. Uh, he missed his land drop, right? So oh, wait, there's a Thalia. He's there's still, a Thalia. still off it with Thalia. Okay. Three mana from Evan Whitehouse. Flashes back Faithless Looting. Let's make that four mana. Oh, yikes. So Whitehouse was trying to do something where he, he wanted to flashback the Faithless Looting 
and resolve that and then use his fetch land to bring back the blood gas in case he found prize amalgam or if he already right. has one in hand. Right. But he has to pay one extra for the looting, so he'll have to get the blood gas back with this yeah. fetched land if he wants to get them back this turn. And actually, Ryan, because he has both basic mountains, he had to fetch and shock to make that play, putting him down to eight, which really matters on this board. And now it's a situation where he's looking at something that might have been powerful versus literally needed to take three damage yeah. to play the game this turn. And did he, is he going to bring back those blood? Yeah, and I think a bit of a miss. He, he didn't bring back the blood guests either. Maybe that was intentional. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Dredge. So there's going to be the dredge of one, the dredge of two. Which makes sense because originally he was hoping to bring back these blood guests post looting and just that didn't work. Now he will still get his prized amalgams because he found an Arc Amoeba. Yeah, he's definitely under significant pressure here. Getting Narcomoeba to get back the Amalgams makes leaving the blood gas in the graveyard feel not very good. Right. Narcomoeba in play triggers the two prized Amalgams. They're into play tapped. And now at eight, Evan's going to have to survive through the next exchange. So he had to, a bit a missed folly on the board meant he had to go recover from that play and mm -hmm. he's got something he's not you know we'll see what he can mount for a comeback jessup has a good <laughs> poker hand three collected companies with flooded strand kicker well you know draw flooded strand is probably the best draw possible it in that turns hand on the rest of them yeah <laughs> that's a good pair this swing it's for four currently with the right collected company i don't think it becomes lethal yeah, you're attacking with a human and a spirit. It's a lot more difficult to yeah. assemble combinations that make that lethal. But the Collected Company finding some flyers, uh, Geist of St. Traft, you can push a lot of the damage on the following turn. And Evan down to six. Uh, so there is a conflagrate available in White House's graveyard. And a fairly full grip. But uh, Jessup has maintained that collected company, so he can try to play against that if he can company into another draw skull captain or something like that. But White House dredging, there's a creeping chill. Okay, that might buy him another turn. Yeah, nine life is significantly more than six. Jessup down to 15. I mean, you'd love to get Jessup to a point where these blood guests have haste. That's we're still, you know, two more creeping chills off that. That's such a busted interaction. That if he had hit three of them, then suddenly just... Oh, <laughs> like yeah. oh you're at 18? Okay, you're dead. Okay, you're at nine. Ooh, get back six power of haste. I'll just, I'll, let, me, let me draw five. <laughs> Deal nine damage to you for zero mana. Gain nine. Gain nine. That's a... <laughs> Make some hasted creatures yeah. from, for zero mana. Yeah, paying for spells. I don't know why you'd do that. So the ceiling on the dredge deck is so high. Yeah. So, Evan... Now let's decide on his play. Now, because of that collected company in Dan's hand, there's possibility for spell quellers to suddenly show up here. There's a lot of a lot of traps. Yes, spell queller, additional draw skull captain, just to get a lot of power in the air. Reflector mages, if he's kept left some in. So that one's always interesting when you have reflector mage and spell queller as possible hits because you're not always clear. The timing, the timing. can get awkward. Yes. White House thinking about starting with that Conflagrate. That that All would right. force action on the Collected Company, almost certainly. A three-mana Conflagrate because of Thalia means this would be Evan's spell. And most of his mana spent on it. And that's going to be the play. Exile and Conflagrate. Remember, we'll have to tap three here. A full group of cards, however. It looks like a bunch of junk. There's a multiple Narc Amoebas in the grip, but still a big Conflagrate. Looked like six cards discarded. Yeah, full six. Everything. And now, Jessup going to go for Galactic Company. Spell Queller should do it here. Mausoleum Wanderer would do it here as well. I'm not 100% oh, no, on wait, the converted mana queller. cost oh. uh, on Conflagrate. I believe you checked it's, uh, out. Yeah, so this yeah. is a 13 mana spell. Yeah, it's tough to quell that one. All right. You can Mausoleum Wanderer it, though. You can do that. 
Right, you don't pay mana for it. Forget. It still mana. contributes to X, as far as I understand. Yes. Right, X. It con contributes twice. So this, yeah. Yes. CMC thirteen. It's a very expensive spell. <laughs> when this card came out, it was not good. Yeah, I was saying, <laughs> no one ever played this when it was in standard. Not even close. <laughs> they barely played it in draft. Six cards. We see Supreme Phantom. Land, land, land. Second Thalia. Noble Hierarch. This is a miss. That's going to resolve. And now we see where the six damage is going. I assume it's going to sweep the sweep the team in two upstairs was the play. Maybe he put an extra damage on Drog Skull Captain. I could have seen that. He went a very different play. He went. He's trying to win this turn, Ryan. He went one to Noble Hierarch and five to Dan. Meaning he, I, he's trying to get those blood ghasts to be to gain haste. Yeah. Did he no. leave a land in his hand to trigger the blood ghasts? Uh, I believe that there was one card set to the side. Okay, yeah, that, there, so that I bet it's a land. Hand, I would be surprised if it was <laughs> other than land. This play implies Evan's trying to win the game this turn. So two creatures into play for Dan. He's going to have to Legend to rule away that Thalia. I do like that. He gave his Thalia Vigilance the hard way, having that blocker against the Blood Gas. Right. Now he has two blockers that covers two Blood Gas. Fetch land means Blood Gasts have haste. There are three of them. That's too many. Okay, so two blockers... Jessup, is that four blood ghasts or three? It's four, Ryan. This is lethal. This is lethal. There's the, the four damage, four blood ghasts. All of them come in for exactly eight. And that. and that, what a steal for Evan Whitehouse. That is the power of Dredge. Whew. Dan on a hugely favored board. So what are the things that had to happen there? So first he has to he has to mill over cre creeping Joe. Yep. And he has to get the fourth blood ghast in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And Dan Jessup's. Collected Company has to not hit Mausoleum Wanderer and not hit Reflector Mage. I think that would also save him there. Yeah, one fewer attacker. One attacker away yeah. and you have a good blocker. Yeah, the pretty big misses for Jessup there. Some nice draws for White House. And yeah. winning that game is huge. That means that Jessup's only going to have one shot at a game on the play with Rest in Peace. He and has to right, win this right. one. Right, right. Hitting, not hitting Remorseful Cleric. Mm-hmm. Well, he does have to win this one, you know. Yeah, I mean, he has to win this one either <laughs> way. But, but yeah, this, it's this big. is the best odds he has at a game. Yeah. Yeah, he, he gets to be on the play. I mean, another – he was on play for game three, and he didn't get it. Game four, he'll get to be on the play now. If he does, this game five is going to be a tough one for Dan. He can't cheese with turn two rest in pieces. Right. That hand he had kept. Noble Hierarch into Thalia Wanderer. That seemed like it should be enough. And I think it's showing where Creeping Chill upgraded the dredge deck. Without that card, it's not just that it did three damage. It also gave four blood guests haste. Yeah, so the Thalia was good on exactly turn two. It, it slowed White House down there, but then Jessup's hand did not cooperate. Right. He drew three collected companies. He missed a land drop for a turn, which pushed him back. He had to pay the Thalia attacks in a big way as well. Right. Two collected companies in his hand weren't cards. He only had time to fire off one. And collected company, a great card, but a high variance card. Right. And we talk a lot about combo decks or a deck like Dredge, where in the modern format you really need pressure and disruption. And Thalia was kind of that, but it's not enough pressure, and it was double-sided disruption. That That's too big of a cost to pay. Yeah, so Dan going to hope to find some of those rest in pieces as we get ready for game number four. Now, oh, here in December for Star City Games Game Night, we still have some, you get some chances all month to win exclusive pins and tokens for playing local tournaments all around the country. In December, you are getting the Bramble Hopper Elite. This is my favorite token of 2018. We had to, we saved the best for last. Right. And 2019 Game Night, there we go, getting a bit of a makeover here. Uh, but when we'll start with the Perdukin. This is the 1-1 one -one Cat Wizard. Uh, from Street Fighter, I believe. Yeah, it was a secret character. You had to unlock it. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, it's a reskin of your... <laughs> in the game. And we have Yeti Steady Go. That's going to be given out in February. You can get signed up for Game Night as a store or find a game night near you at StarCityGames.com slash Game Night. Definitely on theme to have the Yeti for February. Is this the coldest? It's January and February are the coldest months. Yes. 
They're also the months where you're the most sick of winter, so you feel it the most. Yeah, <laughs> the complaint equity goes up. <laughs> I have been cold for four months. It's too much. Jessup on the play. I don't... He's debating this one hard. When my, opponent, when my band opponent looks at his hand for this long, I'm going to assume there's not a turn two rest in peace. Yeah, I mean, this this is an important match to take a look. This is the most important game of his tournament. Miles Lame Wander starts things off for Jessup. A steal in game one for Dan, but he has been unable to capitalize on it, and now his hand down is two to one. Really full of lands, and not a not a white card in sight, unless it's that gold yeah. one in the back. Well, it looks like the hand is a fast attacking hand. He's got Wander into Supreme Phantom, which, as we saw earlier, you know, during our Swiss rounds, he can just kind of beat up his opponent that, not play the interactive game. But I don't know about if you can do that in this matchup. Well, the Wander is great against Cathartic Reunion. You know what it's bad against? Ooh, wow. Dark Nightmare Blast. Nightmare Scenario. Yeah, he was hoping this card would be attacking in. If he had dodged Dark Blast, this would be attacking in for three on turn two. It would be a 2-2 for the rest of the game. Dark Blast would have done nothing. This was the the window we was hoping to avoid. Well, Dark Blast kills the Mazda with Liam Wanderer. It's a dredger on the first turn, and that means yeah. that the Wanderer is not checking turn two Reunion. Right, there's so many things that went wrong in White here. House's favor. And now Dan fetching a basic. I mean, w when you th consider that hand, one of the concerns in Dan's mind certainly was, does Evan have one of his two Dark Blasts? Mm -hmm. Because this hand is very weak against the card. Yeah, Ross Miriam has been singing Gut Shots praises in the modern format. When Gut yeah. Shots good, a Dark Blast is great. And the follow-up is the same for Jessup. He will tap out for turn two Supreme Phantom, but no longer does he have defense against Cathartic Reunion. Evan will get to dredge. There's Shields are down, and down in a big way. And that uh, gold card Jessup had available it is a spell queller. We'll see what White House is able to do this <sighs> turn. And he mills over a Creeping Chill and a dredger for the next turn in Stinkweed Imp. Well, you don't know if it's for the next turn. <laughs> it might be for <laughs> this turn. for this turn. Yeah. If we have a Faithless Looting in hand, sure. Mm -hmm. Fire it up. The hand does look awkward from what I can see. It's a lot of treasures, yeah. Narc Amoeba, Prized Amalgams. Okay, yeah, we have two Prized Amalgam, Narc Amoeba, Life from the Loam, Stinkweed Imp, Dark Blast. That is a sign of relief for Jessup. Evan just says go. He could have cast the Life from the Loam for nothing, right? He could have just binned it. Actually, yeah, he has a fetch land in his graveyard, I believe. He's already got the Stinkweed Imp online, so there's not a ton of pressure to that. Saving that to make sure that you can get the land back makes some sense to me. Jessup making a land drop, leaving up that Spell Quiller here. Yeah, Stinkweed Imp finds another Creeping Chill. Three more damage. And Bloodgast into the yard. You know, if Spell Queller is up... Yeah, go ahead and merge those graveyards. Uh, it doesn't matter if all you're doing is Creeping Chills and Bloodgast. None of those are cast. Mm -hmm. Spellqueller at least gets to block Bloodgast, but I would not consider that a huge win. There's the dredge of five from White House. Dredging is interesting here. You really wanted to flip over a Faithless Looting there. Then he can actually right. turn his hand on because last turn the problem was he didn't have Cathartic Reunion, didn't have Faithless Looting. Well, he has a lot of dredgers. If yeah. he can get him online, he had no way to get him online. He's just going to pass. He doesn't want to throw that Life and Loam into Spell Queller. You know, Ryan, I do think it was a bit of a missed opportunity. Turn two, he could have cast Life from the Loam, getting back that Wooded Foothills. And, and with the way the board is now, I kind of wish he had. Yeah, with no land drop rolled up, it, it's looking like he got punished. And it, it was scripted, too. He knew what he was drawing. It was getting mm -hmm. that imp... Yeah, it's a rough spot for White House now. Mausoleum Wander and an attack for one from Dan Jessup. He's got that spell quality, you see, right at the front of his hand. And it's interesting to me, he made Wander when he actually could have gone for an end-step collected company. He's really valuing that card. I mean, uh, White House has not really got his mana online, and it is a 2-2 two, two, two Wanderer. Right, it's not going to get Dark Blasted. Right. There's also something to be said to having a guaranteed game plan. He knows he gets a Wanderer and gets to leave a Spell Queller taking this line. Okay. Whereas Collected Company does have a pretty low floor. You can miss entirely. One Dark Blast at the, mo at the Wanderer from White House on end step. 
Well, that's fine. That's just putting the card in the graveyard. Yeah. It does not kill the Wanderer. Just yeah. mostly getting a dredger in his graveyard. Yeah, so this is this play to me suggests that Evan, rather than trying to naturally draw land three, wants to dredge again this turn. Yeah, I think he would prefer to get the Dark Blast hit by Spell Queller. You know, Jessup might go for that because that's the dredger in the graveyard. Then White House gets to cast Life from the Loam. Yeah, if I'm Dan, I'm not sure I want to take this bait. Like, just let the Dark Blast happen. What is it doing? Mm -hmm. Jessup would still be able to use the Wanderer then to counter the life from the loam, but you, know, you get a dredger in the graveyard and can try again next turn. It looks like Dan is going to quell this. And he already has his three basics, so he does have to fetch in shock for that. Spell Queller is cast. And this is on Dan's end step, so Evan does get to refresh that Blood Crypt. And that felt... I liked that play from Evan. This It was a bit of a bluff, and he felt like he got very rewarded. Yeah, he wanted to be able to use that Life from the Loam this turn yeah. without fear of Spell Queller. Yeah, now my guess is it will still be Mausoleum Wandered. I don't think Dan wants to just give him that land. Right. So here is Life from the Loam. Targets three lands. Jessup does have the counterspell on board. Any reason to let this happen? I mean, because it's... I guess it technically doesn't do much this turn. So it gets blood gassed back. It's just one copy. The yeah. reason that Jessup is less interested in this is because he wants to maintain flying power. The 2-2 two -two Mausoleum Wanderer actually is worth quite a bit on Jessup's board. He has a lot of work to do on White House's nice. life total. He lets it resolve. Yeah, I mean, right, two creeping chills are just, it's dumb. Some Dan's <laughs> at 10, blood guests already have haste. Right. And Jessup <laughs> also light on cards in hand. He had a very land-heavy draw this game. Right. All right, so White House, White House has those lands back. He's just had that handful of dredgers and prized amalgams, so I would assume that it's just some land tap. He hasn't had the ability to cast a spell for a while here. Could be thinking about whether he even wants to return the blood guest. If you wait, then you might also mill over a prized amalgam or have some way to discard the amalgams from hand. But there's wooded foothills, and he does get the blood guest out of the graveyard. There's basic mountain off the foothills. Right. Um, did take a natural draw this turn. Yeah. Well Might have found the Faithless Looting. Okay. Is there something specific? Yeah. He's, I guess he doesn't have too much to loam into. Yeah. He, he just put the dredger in the graveyard, so dredging the loam here. Yeah. This, this, this Faithless Looting is a pretty valuable card, especially with all these prized amalgams in hand. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And because he had to fetch there, if he finds more blood guests, he'll have, they'll have to wait a turn. But... Here we go with the draw two. First, first draw is a dredge of life from the loam. Mulling over a land, a shriekhorn, and a faith looting. So the second draw is just going to have to be a natural one. Yeah, those are pretty poor. Finds a fetch land. I think that's actually a welcome one. Interesting decision now. He chose to bring the blood gas back. If that was right. still in the graveyard, discarding the two prize amalgams is pretty easy. But yeah. with the blood gas already out, then there's a lot more incentive to discard a dredger with one of the amalgams. That's exactly what he does. He gets an stinky imp and one of the prized amalgams. He's got some life points to work with. He, you know those creeping chills? Got him all the way up to 20. Yeah, starting at 26 is pretty good. The blood gas doesn't have any good attacks. You know, the spell queller is just a great blocker. But uh, you do get the attack, and Jessup can either go to 8 or Jessup can block and you have your blood gas back in your graveyard. Uh, so that, that will give him access to that prized amalgam here. Jessup goes for the block, wants to preserve his life total a little bit, doesn't want to be vulnerable to those last two creeping chills or a conflagrate showing up. And it looks like Thalia was picked up. Hand currently Thalia Collected Company, so we'll have to choose between one of those on this turn. 
the very significant window for Thalia, I think, has passed. It's probably more worthwhile to use the Collected Company on this turn cycle. Okay. You could potentially find a Spell Queller to catch something on White yeah. House's turn. 